In this unit, we'll look at some slightly more advanced features of Sketch Engine. Uh, in particular, we'll learn how to use CQL queries to uh, look for specific uh, term structures, and um, we'll also look at how to use how to combine CQL and regular expressions. Um, I'll show you some tricks how to, for example, extract all the abbreviations and their canonical forms. Uh, we'll look at how to search for definitions, um, term collocations, and uh, similar things. And at the end of this rather short lesson, uh, you will um, have again uh, a set of exercises to practice what you've learned. So far, we have looked mostly at inbuilt features of the Sketch Engine, such as word lists concordances and we've ordered concordances to the left and to the right. We also looked at word sketches and we have uh, extracted single and multi-word terms using the inbuilt function and the uh, term grammar provided. And there was one slightly more complex thing when we extracted a word list uh, made up only of nouns and we used a simple regular expression. Um, to uh, compile it. Uh, so for the following bit we're going to learn about slightly more complex queries and I hope that you have looked at the tutorial of the CQL basics. You have the link provided uh, in, the, um, uh, in, the, in the lesson area. Uh, this tutorial explains the basic syntax of CQL, uh, mainly how to use attributes such as lemmas, words, and tags. And um, essentially what you need to know is that each word should be enclosed in square brackets. And then you have different operators that you can use. Um, you can also uh, you can also combine uh, the CQL syntax with uh, regular expressions. Uh, so I trust that you also, if you're not familiar with regular expressions, that you took some time to um, look at the tutorial provided where you can practice with different um, multiplying operators uh, and different character sets such as um, digits and so on. Some of, this thing, uh, some of these things we shall be using in the following uh, bit. Okay, so um, I have a small corpus on wind energy with about um, 30,000 tokens. And uh, let's say that I first use the inbuilt uh, term extraction function. And when I explore it, I might be happy with some of the suggestions that I have, especially in the multi-word um, list. I can see many interesting terms that I would like to explore further. Uh, for example, since the topic is wind energy, there are quite a lot of terms beginning with wind. Now, um, if I want to focus on these, and we usually refer to these as term nests, so all multi-word terms um, deriving from a keyword such as wind, I can compute a concordance and then order it to the left and to the right, like, like we've done last time, and explore. But there are better options. So I'm going to use a CQL query uh, to look for all bigrams beginning with wind, with a lemma wind, and um, ending with a noun. And you can look at the query here. So it's uh, each word is in square brackets and I'm using the attributes lemma and tag to specify what I'm looking for. Um, and indeed, we get a concordance of all expressions matching the query, but sometimes it makes sense to look at the frequency lists of, of the um, things that matched. And by clicking Note Forms, I get a frequency ordered list of bigrams beginning with wind. And this is quite useful already for terminology purposes if I am exploring term nests. There is a notion of possibilities what I can do with CQL tags 
using uh, attributes such as tag and lemma. So now, for example, I can look for a similar thing, just that I'm interested in adjectives preceding wind. Uh, and I get a list of bigrams where wind is the head word and there is an adjective pre-modifying it. And again, by clicking on node forms, I get a frequency ordered list. I can uh, easily combine uh, combine those queries. For example, now I'm interested in um, noun co nominal compounds, so sequences of three nouns. Or I can I can change this query and. Um, look for nominal compounds with a specific uh, lemma at the end. So, for example, now I want to look at nominal compounds with energy. And there is not very many hits, only one uh, such sequence of two nouns followed by energy. And uh, um, I can also look for non-contiguous sequences. So for example, now the empty square brackets means that I'm allowing one word in between. So one word between my query words. Um, this is essentially similar to looking at specific uh, collocations or specific occurrences where t two words occur near one another, uh, like now I want to see whether there are occurrences of wind and energy and I'm allowing up to three words in between. So look at the query. I'm using a curly bracket to specify the range and an empty square bracket to specify uh, any word. And as you can see, there are uh, not many cases where wind and energy have words in between. Most of the cases are wind energy. There's another neat operator in SQL that I want to show you, and that is the meet operator. Now I want to look for the words wind and solar occurring in the same context, um, and I'm allowing up to four words in between, but the order of these two words is not specified, so solar can occur either to the left or to the right of wind. And now let's look at some um, ways how to find definitions in the corpus. Um, a simple way of looking is simply by entering a typical definitional phrase in the phrase query window, such as is a kind of or is a. But um, this will yield many hits and not all of them are useful. So it's much better to exploit um, the characteristic of definitions where normally we have a noun phrase followed by a definitional phrase and then again followed by a noun phrase. So I will formulate a SQL query specifying that I want a noun followed by is a and then again another noun. And as you can see here, we already have some definition candidates in those couple of hits. Of course, the corpus was very small, but um, now I can switch from the keyword in context to the sentence view. And I see that the first uh, two sentences are um, uh, perfectly nice definitions from uh, Wikipedia. There are other definitional patterns to explore. Uh, for example, um, is called, so something is called something. This is also quite a frequent way of explaining what something is or explaining the meaning of a term. And again, I'm allowing a couple of words uh, in between. And indeed, I find um, a single useful definition with this pattern. Um, sometimes uh, it's easiest, especially if I'm looking for a sequence which is not very frequent in the corpus, it's easiest to simply use the phrase 
a query window. So if I use something like referred to or refers to, uh, I will also find some definitions. There are also useful things that you can do combining CQL and regular expressions. For example, here I'm looking at the extracted single and multi-word uh, units, and I can see that there are a number of abbreviations that are specific for my corpus and might be terminologically relevant. Now, if I want to extract uh, those abbreviations, I can formulate a SQL query using a regular expression within the lemma attribute, or actually within the word attribute, that's better, because such words uh, tend to be uh, lemmatized incorrectly. So I can look for a group of characters, which I will define again in the square brackets, and a multiplier operator. Uh, and uh, like this, I will simply extract all sequences of um, uppercase characters. And if I look at the list of node forms, I can see that indeed many of these sequences are domain-specific abbreviations, which are used um, in the context of wind energy. If I want to explore, for example, what IRENA means, I can click on the concordance and look for it. Um, there is another feature of abbreviations, namely the brackets or parentheses. Uh, quite often, mm, abbreviations are explained uh, by using parentheses, so I can, I can um, add the parentheses to my query and hope to find examples where the ab abbreviation is actually spelled out so that we get the full canonical uh, name or title or multi-word term, whatever it is, and then the abbreviation for it. So I try to enter the parentheses and uh, it seems that I have to use a backslash in front uh, of the opening and closing bracket and now I get the concordance uh, and if you look at this concordance you will find that in most of these cases indeed the abbreviation is um, explained. So we get uh, the canonical term and then the abbreviation in brackets. I can even be more specific and um, add the condition that uh, the uh, word preceding the bracket is a noun uh, and then I will get uh, hits where there is a, uh, normally uh, the term preceding the abbreviation. Uh, so here I also used a, a multiplier operator uh, looking for between one and three nouns in front of the abbreviation in brackets and this is what I get. Um, uh, another option that I want you uh, to um, be aware of is that you can use the meet operator uh, to look, for example, for uh, term variants. Like, uh, I know that um, generation uh, is uh, quite often used in the sequence electricity generation, but I want to find out whether it can also occur as a prepositional phrase. And here I can see that in the first example, uh, generation of electricity, it can indeed be transformed um, like this. Uh, and I also get the electric generation as one of the uh, variants of this term. And the last thing to show you is that sometimes we're dealing with terms which uh, may have a very similar um, semantic field and also collocate with similar words and we want to explore the difference uh, in usage between them. Uh, for example, power and energy uh, tend to collocate with uh, similar words, but if you use the inbuilt feature of sketch diff, so the difference between word sketches, uh, this will show you quite nicely what the difference is. For example, um, the green here indicates power while the red is uh, associated with energy 
and you can see that things like station, generation, tower, and so on are usually preceded by power. So power station, power generation, power tower, and so on. While uh, we speak of energy efficiency, energy policy, energy input, energy security, and so on. Um, so, and then again, there are some words here in the white part of this column uh, which uh, occur with both, so both with power and with energy, such as system, power system, or energy system, power supply, or energy supply, and so on. So this is quite a useful feature. This unit was rather short, but quite intense. We've looked at a number of examples and different queries. Uh, so I think that uh, now uh, it's time to uh, to move on to the exercises that uh, we've prepared for you uh, where you can practice uh, CQL queries looking for definitions and in the second part you will also compile your own corpus uh, to uh, test how uh, these uh, different search procedures work in um, your own domain.